Okay. Okay. Well, hello to all of you in the room. And and I'm so excited to have this opportunity to do this, well, I, I guess I should say take this big risk. We've never before tried to do a combination of a face-to-face -face presentation with a virtual presentation, both of us in different locations, but here to share with all of you. So we are ready to share our passion with you about online learning. And and uh, we've got a little gimmick here. We have created a special credit card for you that is a way to help you charge up your PLN, your personal or professional learning network. And the great thing about this credit card is that it has no expiration date. So we hope with all of the resources we have to share with you today that you will see the value of becoming a, a superhero credit card user for growing your PLN and for seeking out free resources that are readily available to you. We all know how difficult it is to find funding for anything these days, let alone professional development, and yet it's something we all need. And we need it to be high quality, either free or very low cost, and it needs to be flexible. We we don't all have big chunks of time that we can set aside for a day of learning. And so we hope that through the things we have to share with you today, you're going to find out how you can do that for yourself. And here is your charge card. Now, this is not one you have to even fit in your wallet. You just need to know that you have it. And it's there, and it has unlimited funds in it. And it's going to help you take charge of your own professional learning. Your interest will compound daily based on your investments of time and energy. And remember, there's no expiration date on your credit card. Kim, would you like to say a few words about this? And then I'm going to take them into application sharing. OK, before we do that, I am going to ask, and sorry about the feedback. This is one of the things we're learning about. Um, okay. How many of you have ever attended or participated in an online webinar? All right, all right. So the other ones, Chris has two. You, you have it? Yay, have you? Yay, we got two newbies in this with us. That is absolutely Fantastic. wonderful. Isn't that great? Yes. OK. So in the live binder, Peggy, you're going to go live, right? I am going to go live. So let me, let me do that right now. Because what we want all of you to know is that we have a very special live binder that is loaded with resources for free professional development, whether it's webinars or virtual conferences or tools like Twitter and TweetDeck and Periscope and all of those things. And they're all inside this live binder that you can see on the screen. That's what the live binder looks like when you open it up. So I'm going to open that up for you on my screen now. And um, take you on a really quick guided tour. Kim, check with people to see how many ha are familiar with live binders in the room. Well, let me see. I've been looking at one, two, three that were in the class this morning. Oh, we've got a shaking of the hand, kind of. No, how awesome. about you over here? Nope. Okay. Great. So, so we've got probably four. OK. Well, LiveBinders is just a wonderful tool for sharing, curating, and collaborating on resources. And basically, it's a three-ring binder, but it's a digital binder. So it's a, it's a way that you can um, compile these resources, and they're live and virtual. So this is the live binder we've created for you. And I'm right here on the very opening tab in the live binder. Live binders have tabs, and they also have subtabs. So when you click on a tab, 
look what happens. It opens up into lots of subtabs, as many as you put in there. You'll see this awesome picture. This is a picture of a gathering we had for a then virtual conference. And <clears throat> I thought it was a great picture to kick this section off because if you can get together with other people for a virtual uh, conference, it's so much fun. And you get so much out of being able to share right on the spot with each other as you're learning from the presenters. So that's why I put that picture in there. But down below that are all these subtabs. And if I click on any one of them, you'll get a new tab opening up. And everything that opens up in the Live Binder is a live website. So if you want to um, click on a link that's in that um, sub tab, it will actually open up there. You can put in um, YouTube videos. You can put in uh, PDFs, Google Docs, um, Microsoft Word Docs, all kinds of things. Um, this is a, an example of a webinar that I probably won't mention today, but it just shows you the kinds of resources that are there. And every one of those will be a live website. And the cool thing about it is it updates. So when you click on that link, if you click on it today, you're seeing the latest information that's on that website. But you can also click on their links and go back to their archives and things like that. So we're going to go into detail about all of these. I just want to give you a, a quick tour through what's here. So we have a tab for free webinars, one for free virtual conferences. And if you haven't discovered virtual conferences, they are wonderful. They may be one day, they may be five days, you never know. But all the ones I've included in the slide binder are free. So you want to check those out and we'll tell you more about those. Then we have a tab that's sort of a miscellaneous tab, but it's all kinds of things that you can do online for free to um, for your own professional learning. So it includes things like Twitter and TweetDeck, hashtags, Pinterest. Did you know teachers are using Pinterest to share awesome educational resources? i can tell you about some of those. Periscope, blogs, there are so many. And there are subtabs for all of those. And then there's one more <coughs> tab. And that is the Live Binders information. If you're just learning about Live Binders, there are a lot of great tutorials and resources right here in the Live Binder. Very cool thing about Live Binders is you can embed a Live Binder inside of a Live Binder. So that's what I've done on a lot of these. And I've given you examples. For example, if you were to go to this top Live Binders um, for 2014 link here, you could click on every one of those and you would be able to see that winning Live Binder for a great example. And we're going to go into more detail on that. I've also included the presentation slides for you in this Live Binder. And when it's all finished, I'll put the recording in here too. So it'll be one-stop shopping for you when you're ready to come back and look at that. So with that, Let's get started with the presentation, Kim, and I'm going to stop the sharing. We've already talked about free webinars, so I'm going to move we on here. I went too fast to Classroom <laughs> 2.0. Um, Peggy George started me on my journey of online resources and growing my own PLN. And it was years ago. and. I started out with the Classroom 2.0 Live. It's a show she does every Saturday. That's another one you will want to mark down. She introduced me to people like Steve Hargadon, Wesley Fryer, Aviva Dunziger, a bunch of people that I now have followed and learned so much from. Um, in fact, I liked what was going on so much with Classroom 2.0 Live. I took the archives and made them part of the professional development for the Madison School District. That's where I'm the technology integration specialist. And I wanted to provide an opportunity with quality work or quality materials that they could use any time and just do a feedback form to me. So 
we started with Classroom 2.0 Live. And I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide. And when I talk to you about the archives, I mean archives with a capital A. Peggy saves more stuff and knows where it's at than I will ever in my lifetime be able to accumulate. And this is probably just within the last week. So when you go into the Classroom 2.0 web show, be sure to check out out Peggy's live binder. The one that she built for us today is nothing compared because to what she does for the show, every link that is done by the presenter, every link that is mentioned in the chat is put into that live binder for every show. You won't be able to get through them all. They're wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Okay, and another one that Peggy introduced me to was Ed Webb. We're always going to be talking about free. First and foremost, that's what we have to do as educators. And secondly, Peggy and I have found, mainly Peggy, so many really good quality websites. And edweb.net is one of them. They have communities. So I belong to the digital citizenship community, community and um, get funding community. And they offer webinars and all sorts of resources, once again, for free. So I'm, and they, like the other ones, they do archive all their work. Peggy's going to talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> yes, EdWeb webinars are fabulous. And I, I love that they not only offer them for free for the live sessions, but everything in their archives are free too. All you have to do is register. You sign up on the site. And then you join these communities that share your interests and passions. So I made, I actually made two slides just to give you the sense of the many communities they have there. You're not going to be able to read these on this slide because they're very small. But I belong to easily uh, maybe 50 communities. And there are even more that I don't belong to. But what you do when you go to EdWeb is you join a community. And then you'll get notifications about their upcoming webinars. So if you're interested in Get Ed funding, for example, that is a um, series of webinars. It's all about ways to find funding sources and write grants and get technology in your classroom. So you'll get notified when they have a webinar coming up. And then you can, if you can't participate live, you go in and watch the recording afterwards. They have a great one on growing school gardens where they've shared all kinds of tips and resources about how you can get one started at your own school. There are a lot related to technology, but they aren't all. Um, I love the webinars for teaching students with autism. They always have great resources and ideas. And then they have a lot on the brain and learning and, and STEM, all kinds of things related to STEM. So that just gives you a bit of an idea of what you'll find when you go there. So go in. Um, Join the site and then start browsing through their um, communities and you will be amazed. One of the ones I, I like to mention, there's a community called New Teacher Help. And it's great, not only for teachers that maybe are in their first few years of teaching, but also for those of you that are mentors and coaches and help to um, facilitate uh, new teachers in the classroom. They, it's done by Shannon Holden. And he's an assistant principal. And he gives you lots of great tips. It may be about classroom management. It may be about how to handle bullying in the classroom. I mean, it could be anything. He may give you tech tools and how you can use them, like Remind with parents, things like that. So that's one community that I would recommend that you take a look at. and try to go to one of his webinars, or at least watch the recording and see what you think. OK, so I have been fortunate to hitch my wagon to a star. And that star is Peggy. She's a friend. Um, she's a mentor and pretty much somebody that if she says do it, I do it, because she knows what she's talking about. So in tw 2012, she asked if I wanted to do a show. And it was kind of based upon what we've done at my house. We call them the Geek Fest. 
And people would come over on a Saturday and sit around my cow kitchen table, drink coffee, have donuts. It was not formal. We just shared. And those we had on a somewhat regular basis. Well, she asked if I wanted to do a Geek Fest show with her, and of course I said yes. And what made this one unique, it wasn't just Peggy and I going, oh, check out this resource, check out that resource. It was people coming in and sharing as well. And what was amazing, there was a guy in Germany that would get up in the middle of the night to join us. Now, that's a compliment. I don't want to think that he didn't have a life. I want to think that he was just so astute knowing what a good resource was. So people would come in and take the mic over and share their resource. And Peggy would go ahead and keep track of all those within a live finder. There's things like that happening all the time out there for educators. Peggy, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you've covered it. I mean, they were really exciting times. And sometimes, gosh, we might have 20 people showing up. And other times we might have seven or eight. Mm -hmm. But everything was recorded. All the recordings are on that wiki space. And you can actually go back and see. It's kind of fun to go back and hear some of those because, you know, technology changes so fast. And that was in 2012 when we were doing that. So four years later, it's kind of fun to see which of those tools are still around? Which are you still using? What are you using now instead of what we were talking about then? So I encourage you to take a peek at those. I think my favorite one, though, was, and I'm sure Peggy would agree, was the night that I sang Happy Trails at the end of one of the shows. <laughs> <laughs> and now we want to ask, ask a quick question. Virtual conferences mm -hmm. or online conferences? And Peggy, we've got six people in the room. Anybody in here participated? we got one shaking head. Okay. I Two, all right, two going once, going twice, all right. Um, so we've got two of our six in here if they've done that. Hopefully, these resources will help you decide maybe I want to give it a shot. And Peggy's now going to talk about her favorite subject aside from technology, and it's librarians and libraries. <laughs> I am a huge fan of librarians, and I really think that they are the hub of the school, and they have so much influence over the, the uh, things that happen in the school. And this is just one example of many that you'll find under that tab for free virtual conferences. Library 2.0 has been going on for a number of years. And they have a big conference that's three days long, sometime during the year. But they also have mini conferences. They actually have a mini conference coming up in June. Um, these are all free. All you have to do is log in, check out the schedule, and see what's going on. The one in June is just a half day. Like It's, it's like about three or four hours long. And they have some really famous people um, that are presenting. And it's a great opportunity to learn about things that are happening in the world of librarians. So I would encourage you to take a look at that. Another conference that I also love, all of these are hosted by Steve Hargadon on his Learning Revolution site. They're also all in the LiveBinder, so you can find them again. Global education is such an important thing for us to be dealing with right now. And every year, there's a global education conference in November. It's about a week long. And it has presenters from around the world. They're all done in Blackboard Collaborate. Most of the sessions are about 50 minutes to an hour long, and they're all recorded. So you can go back and browse through the topics and listen to those that you're especially interested in. But global education is something our students really need. So it's good to get inspired and to learn about some of those resources so you can help your students. OK. So after Peggy Show Classroom 2.0, my next aha was the moment that Peggy introduced me to the K-12 online conference. Presenters create about 20-minute presentations. They're engaging videos that last over about a two-week conference. You can go in and pick and choose. Once again, they're all archived. The organizers have done a wonderful job of setting up the web page so you know who's going to be speaking when. The presenters are from all over the world and provide ideas and insights that are invaluable to us as educators. Now, some of you may not have admin that fully understand what we're talking about here. So you can always consider taking something to your administrators to see if they will accept this as professional development. 
Um, in Madison, we were able to do that. I just had to simply file with our curriculum director and say, this is what they're doing. Give them an example. And they said, absolutely. And that's how I got it through on all that we use. We're opening it up much more in Madison now. Um, we're doing a program called Level Up. Well, teachers go out and start to do webinars, but they don't have to be prescribed. They just have to provide feedback. So the K K-12 online conference has done a good job of helping provide you with information that you can take that to your administrators. So here are some of the things they suggested. And it's great information if that's what you need to take to your admin. Now, the next one is something I'm very excited about. If you've ever heard of an EdCamp, yes. OK, well, EdCamp is an unstructured event. And the first one I attended back in 2010 was in Denver. And it was Peggy was there. You go in and you set up the, for the first 30 minutes. You meet people. You set up the sessions. And then you just go meet in these informal sessions. Because it was informal, you had more opportunity for conversations, informal conversations. In fact, you were kind of forced to do that. Met some amazing, amazing people, such as Vicki Davis, the cool cat teacher. That's another name to write down. She does BAM radio. I just love her. Tammy Worcester Tang does Tammy or Wor Tammy's Tips. Amazing stuff. And Jeff Bradbury, who I've become an avid follower of. These are just a few of the people that I have met at the ISTE Unplugged. And because of Peggy's help, I am now starting to help just a little bit with it. And it's just so much fun. In fact, I just did, Peggy helped me, we just did an ed camp in this manner for the um, I Teach coordinators at ASU. And they just loved it. All right, now Peggy's going to talk about not at ISTE. Yes. For those of you who get to go to ISTE, you're going to get to experience all of this firsthand. But there are a whole bunch of people that can't go to ISTE. Whether you can't get the time away, or you can't afford the travel and the lodging, and it can be very expensive to do it all, there is a group called Not at ISTE. They have a hashtag, not at ISTE, and they share all the way through the conference. They may actually be doing presentations during the conference, and they'll put it online, and they'll, they may do it in a Google Hangout or in a Twitter chat or something like that. But you can actually participate in those. And this year, that's where I'm going to be participating. So um, I'm looking forward to being a part of that group and sharing some of the great things. I mean, we even have games to play and scavenger hunts and things to create. And this is a resource I want you to know about. And this is in our live binder. Last year, um, Barbara uh, and Tina, the creators of live binders, actually compiled an entire live binder for not at ISTE people. They put in presentations and handouts and all kinds of things that were being shared at ISTE. And it's all available in this one live binder. So check that out if you want to see the kinds of things that they did last year. And we're going to be creating another live binder for this year. So I hope that if you can't go to ISTE, then you'll be able to check in and enjoy this on your own. OK, I think this, I think this one's mine, Kim, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we do the setting next to one another, yes. so this is a little bit more difficult for us. OK, so this is the next tab in the Live Binder. And as I mentioned before, it's kind of a miscellaneous tab because it has a lot of things in it. But they're all tools that you can use to grow your uh, personal learning networks and connect with other educators whenever you have time. It's nothing you have to feel you have to do and be kind of tuned into every day. There are new tools coming along all the time. But I want to do a, a quick um, screen sharing with you to actually show you a few of these things that are in um, the Live Binder under that tab. And TweetDeck is the very first thing that I have on that tab. And TweetDeck is this amazing tool that allows you to actually manage 
keeping up with Twitter, I, and I shouldn't even use the word keeping up. There is no such thing as keeping up. You get out of it what you can, and when it when you go by days without looking at it, you can still go back and pick up where you left off. Kim's going to talk about more more about that, I think, and we're going to share a tweet deck example there. But um, I also have Pinterest on here. I'm just going to highlight a few of these things. There and share a few examples of educators who are uni using Pinterest. We also have things for um, lesson examples. For example, um, LessonCast.org. Kim's going to mention that a little bit later, but that's a place where you can actually go and get real lesson plans. They're all just right there for you. And notice that this is a live link, so this is their latest stuff. And I could click on any of these tabs and go right into those resources. We also have lots of information about hashtags and how you use hashtags to connect with groups of people that you have something in common with. There are some really good resources in there for how to find them and how to use them. Got some things in there about Twitter chats. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. We've got things in there about blogging. Some of you may have actually participated in the teacher, the student um, challenge for blogging that EduBlogs does. They have a whole resource there that teaches you step by step how to start blogging with your students. We've got Periscope. We've got some resources there from Tony Vincent, who does amazing things on Periscope. And he is actually going to be Periscoping live sessions and interviews and conversations from ISTE this year. So he's somebody you're going to want to follow during ISTE to kind of keep up with all the great things that are happening there. And um, that's basically the overview of what's in this section. So Kim, tell us a little bit about your experience with TweetDeck. Well, as I mentioned, I'm still relatively new within a couple of years of Twitter, and I couldn't understand how somebody could follow along. And the first time that Peggy went with us to IST, she was in the bed next to us, and you hear this, brother, 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 all the time. <laughs> And I had no idea. And my traveling buddy, I don't know what she's doing. Well, she had TweetDeck open and her headphones off. You could tell every time the one new came in. And the next night I looked over and she had like that screen right there, but she had more. And it blew me away. I couldn't do it. Last year, I opened up TweetDeck and it is just amazing how many different things you can follow. It separates them so it's not so confusing because what we're doing today, it's all linear. It just comes in one after another. This separates it by hashtags and makes it so much easier to read. This comes with a warning. It's like Pinterest. If you're going to open it up, just kiss a couple hours goodbye because all I do is find resource after resource, saying after saying, and it's all about educational technology. Is, is that a fair assessment, Peggy? Yes, it is. Um, you know, you can have as few or as many columns in a tweet deck as you want. And lots of times when I'm participating in a conference or a webinar, I'll add that column and open it up so that I can interact with other people who are also in it. But then I'll um, remove it. You don't have to keep them in there permanently. You can add them and you can take them away. So like I have a column in there for the conference today. Um, and so it's very easy for me to see what's the latest coming in from all of you that happen to be tweeting about the conference. And I can either retweet it right from TweetDeck or I can quote the tweet and add my own thoughts to it. So it's something that makes it possible for you to manage Twitter. If you just watch that stream flying by all the time and you don't have it sorted out in any way, it's overwhelming because it's so disjointed. Nothing is related to something else. But if you go to the hashtag for this conference, everything that's being shared is related to what's happening today, right now in the conference. So I encourage you to check out TweetDeck. Okay, so we're heading right into our talk about um, hashtags. 
Cyberry man is a totally unique individual. The first time I saw him, the man was in San Antonio in an event with his own little cape. You just look at him and go, okay, strange. The man is an unbelievable wealth of information. Once I came across this, all the hashtags, I just, I got it. All of a sudden, I get what the hashtags mean. So if, if nothing else from today, make sure you go in and have this page because it's going to help you on your quest to go out and find good resources on Twitter. Okay, let me catch up with Peggy here for just a second. So the next level of for Twitter is Ed Chats. And I'm going to tell you right now, my first one, it was like trying to read shorthand. Now, most of you <laughs> in here are too young. Shorthand was a method of just simply scratching symbols across the page, and it used to terrify me. That's what I felt when I was learning to do it and had to do my first letters. That's what I felt with the Ed Chats, the Ed, the, yeah, Twitter chats. Once I got more into it, I, I do participate into them from time to time. They're not for everybody but there, you might find it something that you want to do. So it's something worth checking out. And now Peggy's going to talk about the Twitter chat tool. Oh, and oh. I went too far, Peg. Sorry. Okay, I think we were both looking. I want to tell you about this amazing tool because it's very new. And um, it's basically an alternative to using something like TweetNick, and it's called Participate Learning. And this is in your live binder, so you can check this out later. But if there's a hashtag that you want to follow, you can go into Participate Learning. And when the, um, the Twitter chat is live, you do all your typing right here on this page. And you can see how they're starting with Q6, A6. That the way you do a Twitter chat. It starts with a question and every, everybody adds their answers to the question. And the neat thing is that you can sort those tweets by questions and answers or by the flow that's coming in. And if you share a link in one of these Twitter chats on Participate Learning, it automatically pops up on the left side of the page there. So you can instantly save every resource that gets tweeted about during that session. It's a wonderful tool, and I would really encourage you if, you, if you're using Twitter and you're thinking about trying out a Twitter chat, this is the perfect tool to get started with. And know that you can sit there and lurk. You don't have to type anything if it makes you nervous. Or you can click on the retweet button and just retweet something you're seeing. But it's fine to just lurk and watch, gather the resources, and I guarantee at some point you're going to say, I have an idea for that, and you're going to want to type something in there. So check out Participate Learning. And the next thing we're going to talk about is Pinterest. And I told you, teachers are using Pinterest for lots of things. Sure, they may use it for great recipes and uh, uh, home decorations and birthday party ideas and all that kind of stuff. But they're also using it to share resources with each other. And I want to tell you about my good friend, Laura Candler, who has some of the most amazing Pinterest boards ever. Uh, you can see at the time I took this picture, she had 36,000 followers, and I'm sure that it's closer to 100,000 now. And she has a board for almost every subject imaginable. So if you just follow her and check out the resources she's got, they're especially elementary um, with, a, with a big focus on middle grades like third, fourth, fifth, sixth, but she really has something for everyone. She may have tech tools. She may have tools for every subject area. And that's a wonderful board to get started with if you want to see some educators to follow. Another one I want to mention is Eric Scheninger, who is a fabulous principal. He was a high school principal. He's now a tech 
international consultant who writes books and travels around, but he, he keeps Pinterest boards and he uses them. You can see here on this screen, he's got them on different topics, personal learning networks, web tool tools, Twitter resources. And this is an example of a, super, or a principal who was using Pinterest to share with his parent communities, with his colleagues, um, on, in education, with the community. So broaden your ideas about what you can use Pinterest for. Start creating some boards and sharing those with your colleagues. Okay. Tony Vincent, it's another name to write down. He is um, a guru, a kind person. He has a wonderful website called Learning in Hand. And he, I, would, I think he's the one that introduced me. I did my first Periscope with Peggy. Periscope is you take your phone, you open up the app, and you're going to videotape. And it's a live stream out to the world. It's raw video out there. And the longest I've done is about 35 minutes. And it only stays on for 24 hours. And Peggy will pop in if I've got anything wrong. You can download it, which makes it really cool. I learned about it, but I found a real use for it this year. The school that my office is at, they did a high, no, high altitude balloon lift. So I grabbed my phone. I ran out there, and I did it. And from Oregon, people are going, where did you get this stuff? Tony Vincent, that had moved to the Midwest, is on there going, this is so cool. I hope you record, you're, you're going to save this video and share it. There was somebody from Switzerland that came in with some questions, because people around the world are watching. It comes with a caveat. It is what it is. And you have to be careful, but so dynamic. I think I've done four this year. And the kids have loved it. We have a nano lab, so I saved it. And the teacher got to show it to the other classes. So it's for You're so right, Kim. Use. You do have to be yeah. careful. Yeah. So and it's and a great way. With students especially. Right. And I think the next one we're going to, Peggy, isn't it your favorite? Yeah, oh, but let me say one more thing about periscopes. <laughs> they now have a way that you can save your periscope. It does go away in 24 hours, but if you use the hashtag, and I believe it's live scope, of when you title it, it will automatically save it, and then you can share that recording later. So if you're doing some sort of a tutorial, it's on scopes that you create, not ones just that you follow. Um, it's possible to save those now. So I just wanted to mention that. Super. Huh? And you're so right. This is somebody I want you to know about. She is on Periscope regularly, but she also has a fabulous blog. And her name is Hope King. She's a teacher at the Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, Georgia. She, her blog and her name on Periscope is Elementary Shenanigans. On Twitter, she's at Hope King Teach. She is one of the most energetic, enthusiastic teachers I have ever seen. And it just never stops. She's a fifth grade teacher. There is nothing that she won't do to get her kids engaged. And I just happened to find her on Periscope one day and saw her do a demonstration of something she had, she and her parents had created in her classroom. And it was an entire theme of Allison Through the Looking Glass. You, and I have the link to that, live, or that blog post in the live binder. You are going to love hearing her describe how she created it. And it was done through parent donations and thrift stores and making things from scratch. But she totally transformed her classroom. And the kids were so immersed in it, you couldn't stop them from learning. And she stresses that it's about the learning. And, and obviously, the environment you create is so important. But it's not just to make it fun and interesting. It's to further their learning. And she shares all kinds of strategies that she uses, like chants and, and music and all kinds of things, movement kinds of things, to keep kids engaged and on task while they're working on their their writing or their projects. So I really want you to check her out um, in our live binder and see the kinds of things she's doing. Okay. 
It's time, if you want to learn more about blogging, it's time to go back to Cyberary Man to the rescue yet again. He has created a web page full of information that's going to help you. The one on here that I want to point out, and I probably won't be able to find it now that I'm looking straight at it, is the one with um, McTeach. I was working with a second grade class or third grade classroom, and I used her method of paper blogging. Who in here has blogged before with students? A little bit? Okay. It's pretty abstract. So we did paper blogging. Once again, I learned it all from McTeach. She did it in seventh grade. We ended up doing that at the entire second grade level at one of our schools. And it has just been an absolute success because we take it from the abstract or the concrete to the abstract by using the paper one. So that is a really good one that you may just want to check out. We go here. We're going to keep talking about blogging. And you've got your um, the comments, I'm going to talk about blogs first, sorry. The teacher challenges, and Peggy, you're going to need to jump in here when you can. Okay. It, it talks about blogging with students, but Peggy wanted me to make sure that I brought up um, to tell you about comments for kids. She told me about that. So when kids make a comment, and Peggy, correct me, if you use a hashtag to put the post in the student blogging, they will get responses. Peggy, I know I murdered that, so I bet you're going to want to explain it better. <laughs> I know I did. Actually, you did a great job. It's the hashtag comments for kids. They also have a blog, but if you add that hashtag, if your students are um, using Twitter and add that hashtag, or if you as the teacher want other students and other teachers to give them feedback on their blog posts, there is nothing more encouraging than to have somebody from another country even respond to your or a blog post, especially when you're getting started. So if you use that hashtag, comments for kids, it's just teachers and students sharing with each other. And they may go on there and they may say, my student just blogged about an amazing trip their family took last summer. And please comment. They may say that. So you respond to those just because it's on that hashtag. That would be a good hashtag to put in a column on TweetDeck. Perfect. Peggy, I'm looking. We've only got about four minutes left, so I'm going to do this one. Okay. And then while I'm doing that, why don't you go through and pick out the, the last one or two that we can highlight. OK. OK, so how, how do you learn about keeping track of all these things? Well, Peggy, I'm going to say me, but it's Peggy, has come up all, with all these wonderful ideas. It's a good idea to start small. Don't think you have to hit everything in that binder, guys. Pick a couple that are near and dear to your heart and take it from there. You've got Google+, Plus, you've got Twitter, and all sorts of places that you can branch out to. I love web shows. Um, I'm the one at the gym that's got the iPad mini on the, the, I'm doing this as I'm on the treadmill because that's how I learn. When I'm cleaning, I have a podcast going. I play it through my radio in my car on the way to work because the more I hear, the more ideas I'm going to get and I love it. Um, I don't have a life. So that for me is exciting, you guys, because I've got Peggy, Peggy in my lead. So um, nobody says you have to do it every day, all day. But you'll be surprised by listening to one a week how it's going to grow your level of use. Your, it's going to open up the world for you. Let me put it to you that way. So Peggy, are you ready? We've got two minutes left. <laughs> I, I would like to hand that over to you if you're comfortable with that. Sure, we'll just speed through these because all of these slides are in the live binder so they can follow it and check each one out if they want to. Um, I want to just say this whole section is about resources that are free online that you can find how-to videos, you can find lesson plans. I hope you're all using uh, PBS Learning Media because those resources are great. Discovery Education has lots of lesson plans and virtual field trips. And these links are in the live binder. Lesson cast I mentioned earlier, all kinds of lessons for you. I also would encourage you to go into live binders to start your search for topics and resources you need, let's start with Google. If you Google inside of Live Binders, you're going to find awesome resources that have been created by other teachers. And they've already narrowed the field down for you. And you know that you're getting some good resources that way. 
want to remind you again that this is all about how we can build our own personal learning networks and begin to take charge of our own education. I want to mention that there's an awesome recording in the live binder called from the Education 140 um, conference that has some really good advice from some very uh, knowledgeable educators that I think you'll enjoy listening to. And remember to use your charge card to help you begin to take charge of your learning. And there is no expiration date. <laughs> and our final reminder, learning takes time. So be patient with yourself. And like last but not least, says. I want to thank Peggy in particular. And um, we have to get out of the room. Okay. So thank you guys for being here. Peggy, thank you. And we'll talk. Thank you all.